Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Now let's build daily interaction number 18. Hello everyone, John with WebDev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today we're gonna be building a Lightbox link with a mouse over animation. So here when I hover over these letters, we can see that the letters move around and so does the underline. And when I click, the light box opens and we can watch this video here. And there we go. So this was actually inspired by this website here, uh, Fra Franz Hall's Museum .nl, where they have this little playful uh, play button here in the upper right. Um, so we are gonna get a bit of practice with the mouse move over element interaction in Webflow uh, to create this uh, interaction here. All right, looks good. Uh, so to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project. Uh, so first we're gonna build out the, the elements, so the letters and the lightbox link and then we're going to create the interaction. Um, so the first thing I'll, I'll do here, um, yeah, so here we're gonna be using the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is 18 and then the element. Uh, so this is for consistency purposes and so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 18. Okay, so the first thing I'll do here is add a section so I'll add an element, I'll add a section, and I'll give it the class name D-18 section. And for the height, I'll set it to 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Um, then I'll scroll down to background. I'll set the background color to black. And I'll scroll up to display setting, set it to flex and justify center and align center. So anything I place within the section will be in the center. So we're gonna have the light box link in the, in the center. Okay, so uh, the next thing I'll do is add a div block. So I'll add an element and I'll add a div block. And here I'll call this div block D-18 light box link wrapper. So I'm gonna place the light box link inside of here so that I can later add some padding to this div block and make the mouse uh, the mouse move interaction be a bit larger. So as an example, if we go to the demo, I can hover around these letters um, and the interaction will occur. So we're actually hovering over the light box link wrapper um, and then we're affecting the elements inside of it. All right, so uh, yeah, this will become a bit more clear as we move through uh, as we move through this tutorial. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is add a lightbox link. So I'll add an element and I'll scroll down to components and I'll add a lightbox link. So I'll click and it adds it inside of the light, lightbox link wrapper. Um, so let's go to the navigator here to see the structure of the site so far. So we have the section, we have the lightbox link wrapper, then we have the lightbox link and inside the like box link, there's an image. Um, I actually don't need this image um, because we're gonna place letters inside of the like box link. So I'll select it here and I'll just delete it. I'll hit backspace to delete the image inside of it. Um, so now let's add a few properties to the like box link um, because we, we are gonna place elements inside of it. So I'll go to styles and I'll give it the class name D-18 like box link and I'll give it a display setting of flex and justify center and align center because I'm gonna have horiz horizontally centered letters inside of it. Um, and then for the position, I'm gonna set it to relative uh, because I am gonna have an absolute position div inside of it. And I want it to be relative to this light box link and not relative to some other parent element. Um, yeah, so by setting it to relative, anything inside of it will be relative to it. Um, all right, yeah, it looks good. So that's all we have to do for the uh, light box link. So now let's add the letters inside of it. So 
I'll go to the navigator um, with lightbox link selected. I'll add an element. I'll add a text block. And here we have the text block. So I'll give it the class name D-18 letter. And I'll double click inside of it. The first letter is going to be a capital P. So I'll hold down shift and enter in P. Uh, we notice it has kind of this funky blue color and this underline. And that's because it's in a lightbox link. So Webflow is giving it the hyperlink styling and setting it to blue with the underline. So what we want to do is go into the navigator and here select lightbox link, go into styles and I'll scroll down to typography and here for the underline, I'll say none. So it doesn't have an underline and then I'll go ahead and select the letter uh, here in the navigator and then um, change the font. So I'll say circular bold. Um, I'll give it a font weight of bold and a font size. Let's change the color as well to white. And I'll give it a font size of something like 64 and the line height of, let's say, 80. All right, perfect. So there we have the letter. And I just need to copy this uh, three more times. And then we'll change the letter inside of it. So I'll hit Command-C to copy, then Command-V to paste until I have uh, four letters. So I'll just double click and change the letter. So I'll say P-L-A-Y. And let's see if I want to add a bit of margin to it. So I'll hold down Alt. Yeah, maybe two looks good. All right, so we have the four letters and now we need the underline because in the demo, we have the four letters and the underline. So here I'll select the lightbox link and I'll add a div block. So I'll add an element, add a div block and I'll name this the dash 18 underline and I'll set the position to absolute and I'll set the uh, the position here to the bottom. So it goes to the bottom and then for the height, I'll set it to five pixels and I'll give it a background color of magenta. Okay, so there we have it. So yeah, there's the underline and looks good. So it is positioned relative to the lightbox uh, link uh, because yeah, the lightbox link has a position of relative applied to it. So this is the absolute position div and it stays within the lightbox link. All right, looks good. So we have all the elements we need to create the interaction. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna have the interaction occur when we hover or when we move our mouse over the lightbox link wrapper. So for the wrapper, I wanna select it and I'm gonna add some padding. So I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna add some padding to all sides. So something like 40. And now when we hover over this lightbox link wrapper, um, the interaction will occur. Okay, so with the lightbox link wrapper selected here in the navigator, I'll go into interactions and here where it says element trigger, I'll click the plus and we're going to add a mouse move over element interaction. So it's going to animate while the cursor moves over the element along the X or Y axis and no touch support. So it's only for devices with a mouse or a trackpad. So here I'll select mouse move over element. And on mouse move, we're going to start an animate or play a mouse animation. And I'm going to add a new mouse animation. So I'll click the plus here and I'll name this D 18 mouse move. Okay. So here we have a few, a few options. We have the mouse X actions and the mouse Y actions, and they both have a zero to a hundred percent. So at zero, the mouse is all the way to the left of the interaction trigger or the, um, here it's the, the lightbox link wrapper. So when it's at 0%, it's at the left. When it's at 100%, it's all, it's all the way at the right on the X axis or the horizontal axis. And the mouse Y action at 0%, it's at the top. And at 100%, it's at the bottom. So as we move our mouse around this uh, div block, we can affect different elements and move different elements around. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is move or affect the letter P here. So I can go in the navigator, select it here, or in the designer. So I'll go back into the interaction and I'm gonna have kind of an inverse interaction here. So if we go to the demo, we can see when I move up, um, the, the letters move left and right. When I move left and right, the elements move up and down and they move opposite each other. 
So that's what we're going to do for this interaction. So for the letter P, um, I'm going to select it. And when the mouse moves horizontally or on the X axis, I'm going to add a new time to action. I'm going to say move and I'm going to move the letter on the Y axis. So I'm going to say negative 20 when the mouse moves all the way to the left and Webflow automatically adds a, a second timed action because the mouse movement needs, needs to complete. So it needs a, um, an ending timed action as well. So when I added a movement here, it added a movement at 100% or when the mouse is all the way to the right. So here I'll select this next timed action. And uh, yeah, Webflow is showing us this exclamation point because we haven't added a value yet for the, the, um, the finishing timed action here. All right, so I'll select it here, and instead of negative 20, when it, the mouse moves all the way to the right, I'll move it down 20 pixels. Um, so here I can turn on Live Preview, so I can select it, and we can see what that looks like. So when I move my mouse to the left, the P goes up. When I move it to the right, the P goes down. All right, looks good. And then on the Y, so on the vertical axis, um, when the mouse moves up, I'm going to move it... Um, left, I'm going to say negative 20 pixels, I'm going to move it to the left on the horizontal. And when it moves all the way down, I'm going to move it 20 pixels to the right. So it's kind of an inverse. So as we move horizontally, the letter moves up and down. As we move up and down, the letter moves horizontally. Um, and you can you can customize this to get any type of effect you'd like. Um, I'm just using this to kind of work with with yeah, kind of work with the different movements and showcase uh, the mouse move over element interaction. Um, so I can turn on live preview here, or I can preview here, toggle preview. And as we can see, when I move the mouse around, when I move up and down, the P moves left and right. When I move left and right, the P moves up and down. Um, there we go, looks good. So now I'm gonna add kind of the opposite for the L. So I'm gonna select the letter L. I'm gonna add a new time to action. So I'm gonna say move. And instead of negative 20 pixels on the Y, I'm going to say 20. So it kind of goes the opposite direction of the P. And I'll start it with the P. So I'll click, hold, and drag and place it there. And then I'll add another uh, timed action. So we notice it has the exclamation point because it's looking for the finishing timed action. So here I'll select move and I'll say negative 20. And I'll start it with the 100% here. So now they move opposite each other, just like that. Okay, and I'll do the same for the Y. I'll add a new timed action, say 20, and start it with the first one, add another one, say move, and then say negative 20 on the X. Okay, so there we go. So we have kind of the, that in interesting movement to both those letters. Okay, so I'll do A, so A will start at negative 20, so I'll say move on the X, We'll say negative 20 for the Y, start it with the other letters, and then at 100% we'll move it um, to 20 pixels on the Y. I think I got that right. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, so at 0% it's at negative 20 on the Y, and at 100% it's at 20 on the Y. And then on the Y, uh, when I move vertically, um, we'll say move on the X, we'll say... Uh, let's see, negative, t negative 20, yeah, negative 20. Then we'll start it at the 0%, and then at the 100%, we'll move it 20. And start it at, with the other letters, okay? So there we go, looking good. And then the last letter is the Y. So on the X, we'll move it 20. And we'll start it at 0% with the others. And then at 100%, we'll move it negative 20 and started at 100% here. Looks good. So you can see they're opposite each other. And then on the Y, we'll say so negative 20, 20. So we'll say, yeah, on the Y, we'll say move 20 on the X. And then we'll move it again, negative tw uh, 20. And we'll start at 100%. So as you can see, they all have a 0% and a 100%. All right. And so there we go. Looks good. Um, you could add more random movement to it, but yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate this like this. And then l the last thing we'll do is add um, some movement to the underline. So for this one, I'm going to correlate it to its actual axis. 
So when we move left and right, the line will move left and right. And when we move up and down, the line will move up and down. So when the mouse moves horizontally on the X, we're going to move um, at 0%, we're gonna move it to the right. So it's kind of the reverse uh, movement there. Started at 0%, and then I'll move it negative 20. Started at 100%, okay? So there we go. And then for the Y, yeah, we'll go down to the Y. Uh, so when the mouse moves up, we'll move the underline down. So I'll say 20, start it here. And when the mouse moves up, or when the mouse moves down, we'll move the underline up and start it at 100%. Okay, and there we go. So yeah, we just have that interesting kind of movement to it. Um, yeah, this is kind of like just an introduction to the mouse move over element. We will do quite a few more or a, a, a few more sophisticated interactions with the mouse move over element, but I thought this was a nice introduction to kind of using that interaction. Okay, um, so the next, the last thing we need to do, we've added all the interactions. Uh, we just need to uh, link the Lightbox link to a video. So I'll select it here in the navigator and I'll go to, yeah, select it here, go to element settings. And here for the media, we can add a video. So I'm gonna click add video and I have a YouTube video here um, for yeah the da for daily interaction number one. So I'm just gonna copy the YouTube URL right before the and. and yeah, this and symbol, I don't need the and, t equals one second, just right before it. So I'll hit command C and then I'll paste it here where it says URL and save. Okay, so now when I preview, the user can hover over and have this nice interaction and then click and then the video will play. All right, looks good. And yeah, so that's basically it, creating the mouse move over element interaction uh, for this Lightbox link. Looks good. Okay, so that's it for daily interaction number 18. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I went over, uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below or in the forum for this daily interaction. Uh, so we did play a lot with moving elements across the X and Y and setting different movement positions for different elements here. All right, looks good. Yeah, so that's it for today's video tutorial, creating a mouse move over element interaction and applying it to a Lightbox link. Um, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.